Hi, I'm Carl Kopp, professor of instructional technology and researcher on the convergence of learning, technology, and business. Here's how to add a 3D object to PowerPoint. One feature that's sometimes overlooked in using PowerPoint is the 3D feature. And that 3D feature can be really exciting in terms of adding another dimension to your presentation. So let's go ahead and add a 3D item to our presentation. So we hit insert. When we hit insert, we see 3D models as one of the insert options. We're going to click on that and we can click into a 3D object from a file. So if we have files of 3D objects or we got a 3D object from another website that has them available, we can go ahead and upload it into PowerPoint. But let's say we don't have a 3D object. What are we going to do? Well, PowerPoint gives you the option actually of bringing in models from online sources that they've gathered. So for example, you could bring in maybe a space item or maybe a, a landscape item or a spring item, which might be appropriate, or even a travel item. So let's click on travel and we can see all the 3D items that are available under travel. Let's just pick passport and notice it's got the little red check and we hit, hit insert and it automatically inserts that 3D item into our PowerPoint presentation. So now we've got this nice item. So if we hit on 3D model tools, which comes up when we have the item highlighted, notice it's uh, highlighted, we click on that and we have different views that we can play with if we wanted to look at the different views. But let's say that we don't like any of those views. Well, we can actually use this ball in the middle and move it around as we'd like. It's just to hold it down and kind of drag it to get the exact right look that you might want for that 3D object. You can do other things like alt text and because PowerPoint treats a 3D object like any other object, you can bring it forward, you can send it backwards, you can align it, all those kind of really interesting things. It also gives you the ability to pan and zoom. So uh, if I click on pan and zoom, a little magnifying glass comes up and I can make it really large. And so only that section appears or I can make it really tiny so I get a better view of it. So you can zoom in basically on things that you might want to show in the 3D on the 3D object. But because again, it works like any other item, we can go, for example, to animations and we can animate our 3D object. Now there's five new animations available because it's 3D. So I can have my um, 3D object kind of arrive. If I want to do a little preview of that, you can see how that works as I have it come in and boom, it arrives. But maybe I want to do something different. I want a turntable so it turns around. And notice how it's turning very slowly. And again, like any other object, I can go up to duration. I go, yeah, I don't want that slow. I am going to actually make it three seconds and I'm going to have it turn a lot faster. So now if I preview that, notice it's going to whip around. Whoops come in and whip around much more quickly than it did before because I can change duration. I can also change, I don't want to start on click, I want to start after previous. So you can do lots of different things by stacking together, for example, this and then this. Don't have to click on it and notice because I've got these orders in the animation pane, it does exactly what it does in the right order. I can have it swing back and forth, and then I have effect options, so I can combine. So I can combine swing with effect options. I can have it swing up if I wanted to. I could have it swing clockwise, counterclockwise, and I can even change the intensity. I want a very strong swing, or no, that's not really what I want. I want more of a subtle swing. You can do different types of swings. You can do different amounts and durations. You can even view at a different center. You can jump and turn, one of my favorite. Wee, there it goes. And you can even do things like have it fade away when it leaves. So there's a lot of different 3D options that are available as you bring in and play with 3D objects, which I think is really interesting because it allows you a great deal of flexibility. And so for example, I can do all kinds of things to my item that I want to, and there's all kinds of items. So this is a 3D airplane, for example. Whoops, I got a little thing. I got a 3D airplane, and I can move my airplane around as well. So lots of different objects, and I can combine, as I said before, different animations as I do here, 
and basically have my show have a little bit of animation in it and a little bit of 3D in it, which really adds to the sense of excitement and engagement and just adds that extra little oomph to your PowerPoint presentations. So next time you do a PowerPoint presentation, consider using 3D objects.